Hello and welcome back to Vintage Story. Big day today. Big day. Huge day, in fact. Well, we're gonna get some chores done anyway. Um, but no, like based on the what happened in the last episode and me having to edit it. By the way, there's the bow staff on the on the tool shelf. Real quick, um, people recommended that I do that. I don't know if that's the best way to do it, and I don't. It seems to me that it, no one else does either. But uh, I have to admire and appreciate like some people's dedication to like optimizing in vintage story like i saw a, f a few comments that were like i tried putting it on a shelf or a tool rack above like a uh, pit kiln and i don't think that worked any better and i'm like you know honest honestly like good on you for trying that that's that's pretty uh clever um but like i, I can understand that not working i could also understand that working but i feel like if they were going to implement some better drying mechanics in this game they would let you put it over a fire and then uh like it would have like an in-game kind of thing where it shows the staff like uh you know well above the fire so you're kind of like smoke drying it or something like that i'm not sure if that's how it works in real life but i have to imagine it works something like that um but anyway tin we're getting tin today that's the big deal um there's no ifs ands or buts about it um basically in the last episode uh as i was editing and uh pr reviewing my own footage i noticed that i was getting very close to considerate um considerate is uh tin basically and not only just tin um we're not just getting tin today we're getting other goodies as well but uh Honestly, in this session, like, it wasn't a very long session, hence why it's not a very long episode, but uh, my intention was just to get some crafting materials, uh, or building materials, sorry, for building up the fortress. Um, fortress? I don't know, it's been a warehouse, and a cottage, and a windmill, and all kinds of things, but now, apparently, it's a fortress. But anyway, you can see down there, not just considerate, but um, bismuthanine, bismuth, bismuthanite. Bismuthanite. Okay, well, bismuth anyway. Bismuth is another material, and we can also use it to make bronze, though it requires a little bit more uh, dedicated material gathering from our part. But you can see here my my um, process to getting considerate, getting closer to considerate, is basically mine. It says medium trace, or sorry, medium amounts found, verified medium amounts found, and then as I keep digging, eventually it says. Um, small amounts, meaning we're moving away from it. It could also be above or below us, so occasionally I have to check below or above us. But once it starts saying medium amounts, then I know that I'm moving away, so I have to try a different direction. But there's our bismuth, anyway. Um, I definitely go out of my way. I mean, honestly, at this point, I was just excited to see anything that wasn't copper. Um, so I, I was very zealous in my collection of the bismuth. Um, we also collected a lot of andesite at this point, which isn't really what we were building the uh, cottage out of, but I've decided I'm going to... I caved, no, uh, no pun intended there, and decided to use the andesite to make some building materials. So we'll likely see a little bit of mid mismatched colors going on, but that's fine. So at this point, you can see considerate verified medium amounts down from large. I knew I was heading in the wrong direction, so I decided to go back a bit and try a different direction. But at this point, I'm kind of doubling back on myself, so it should be around. So it dawns on me, it's probably either above us or below us in one of the directions that I've already come from. Right around this point, I'm like, no, this isn't working, so I try below. And of course, below is, is tricky, so I try above instead. Way easier to dig up than it is to dig down. and. Here, here's the moment. There it is. You can just barely see it. And honestly, I didn't even know if I was looking at some, like what I was looking at, but I knew it wasn't andesite. So I decided to double back and make a little staircase leading up until I got into whatever that was. And sure enough, there is our considerate, our tin. Um, these were unfortunately quality poor tin, but I am not complaining because it was a large. Uh, vein of tin so this is going to keep us going for a long time we're not going to be doing any smelting of tin um, this episode anyway that'll be in the next one but I do want to talk a little bit about um, how how it is used so we obviously want to alloy it with copper 
uh, in order to make, um, I believe it is just tin quality bronze. Uh, I don't think that the different forms of bronze are any better or worse from each other. So, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter uh, if we use bismuth bronze or tin bronze. But in any case, the tin bronze is quite nice because we only need 10% tin and 90% copper in order for that alloy to happen. Meaning a very small of tin will actually yield quite a large amount of bronze. And in fact, uh, without spoiling too much, I mean, I'll just go ahead and tell you, we're making bronze in the next episode. But uh, at this point, my bottleneck, my major bottleneck is actually copper. I have a lot of copper uh, bars available and I figured out, um, well, I, you know, me and my friend f figured out that uh, using the uh, chisel, you can basically deconstruct a, an ingot into bits. And that is very good, like, that's very useful because it means you can then re-smelt those bits and the reason you would want to do that, of course, is if you want to alloy them, um, which I do. So um, next episode, we're basically converting our entire supply of copper into bronze. I would like to hear maybe from the comments if there is any reason to keep copper if you are able to turn it into bronze. If there is a good reason, well, uh, I'd like to hear it. I've already done it, so it doesn't really matter. But um, maybe when I go and collect more copper, I may, I'll be less zealous in my converting it into bronze. But it feels to me that bronze would just be better in every way. It makes um, tier three tools over tier two, and that's gonna be really important when we finally find iron. But that's gonna like basically shuffle us from uh, what I would deem, what is the, I don't think there is a copper age. I think technically we're still in the clay uh, forming age or you know whatever pottery age I don't know listen I don't know but uh, you know we are we are in the bronze age so that's pretty exciting um, and uh, we'll we'll need that if we want to make uh, we want to find iron iron is going to be a very involved process and I don't even yet know how to find that honestly I'm just kind of uh, warmed over by the the fact that I finally found tin which seemed to be a very lengthy and um, you know lengthy process it was i don't know like oh yeah i forgot i woke this wolf up and then tried i don't know what happened here he just seemed to disappear i looked i looked for ages there i could not find that wolf but yeah no i'm not gonna i'm not gonna get all hung up on iron right away because honestly bronze is good enough for a while and now that i finally know how to find tin i'm gonna use the same process to to find more materials like that also good to know that, um, well, for bismuth bronze, we're gonna need sphalerite, which is zinc. And in that same zone, as I was digging for the bismuth, I noticed that I was also finding a verified medium amount of sphalerite. So that'll be good. And I'll probably have to go back for that because you know now I have a bunch of bismuth and it's just gonna sit around and do nothing for us unless I turn it into bronze. I don't think that the bismuth is worth anything if it isn't turned into bronze. So that's just what we're gonna have to do. This was pretty funny. I had to get some more clay and I actually couldn't find it because it was all buried in snow. So I had to like dig around a little bit in our area. Um, I, I really appreciate the effects of winter. It, it, it really does change the entire landscape. I was kind of remarking over the fact that a lot of the ponds and lakes around our area have frozen over and then been covered in snow. So it kind of completely changes uh, how you, tra you know, um, travel. But anyway, I noticed I, I had one more bunch of shingles. So I decided to fire those up and uh, that pretty much will do it for this episode. Got a bunch of oak, that's it. Um, I hope you'll join me in the next episode. It's gonna be a biggie. And uh, maybe you'll want to like this one. If you do so, I'd really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.